We're literally living in the most exciting time in human history. A hundred thousand years ago, humanity discovered fire. And then 10,000 or tens of thousands of years went by. And then 10,000 years ago, we invented agriculture. And then thousands and thousands of years went by again. And then we invented the wheel. But in the last hundred years, things have changed. And I don't mean things have changed because we invented something new. I mean, things fundamentally changed because in the last century, humanity has made 100,000 times more progress than it has in the entire history of human civilization. And we've solved some really amazing problems. We've solved epidemics. We've solved communication. We've solved some really interesting problems. And it was all possible because of technology. Technology fundamentally disrupted the course of human history. And so we've created all these things. We've created airplanes. We've created computers. We've created cell phones, AI, blockchain, advanced medicine, self-driving cars, self-flying cars. Like, it's crazy. But we've created all this stuff, and yet every single year, millions of people die from heart disease and cancer. Millions of people die from hunger. And billions of people, billions of people, still don't have access to electricity and the internet. So what is it about these problems that, make them, that makes them so much harder to solve than anything else? The challenge is, they carry this exponential degree of complexity that humanity has never been able to grasp. It's actually fundamental to the human condition to think in a linear fashion. If I were to ask you to, to predict the kind of technologies that we're going to be seeing in the next five years, it would be logical to look back at the past five years and you know, kind of look at some of the trends and see what's going on. But reality doesn't work like that. If we carry an exponential trend forward into the next five years, humanity will accomplish 15,000% more than we have in the last five years. And in 10 years, it's 2 million. 2 million percent more. So it's this crazy exponential trend that makes some of the world's hardest problems so complicated. And if you go back to the early NASA days, in the 1960s, the Apollo missions, uh, mission control systems had several orders of magnitude less computational power than the iPhone in, in your pants pocket right now. And even now, even though we've seen this crazy explosive growth in computational power, the world's largest supercomputer, which takes about as much energy as a small city, takes almost a year to simulate a single day of human brain activity. So it's very apparent that there are some problems that are so much more complicated than anything else we've been able to solve before. And it also shows us that the technology that we have right now will likely never be capable of tackling these types of problems on its own. We still need a step change above the most powerful supercomputers in the world to be able to understand things like brain mapping or world hunger or climate change. And I'm here to tell you today that that technology actually exists right now in the form of quantum computation. So where normal computers use transistors to store information in binary, like ones and zeros, quantum computers use fundamental particles of reality like photons and electrons to store information in states that can be one and zero at the same time. So imagine if I flipped a coin. While the coin is in the air, it's not really showing heads or tails. But when it lands and I look at it, it's forced to take on one of those two states. And this is exactly how a quantum computer works. And so by using this arbitrary state manipulation in quantum computing, we can actually get this crazy exponential speed up that completely changes the way that we think about solving problems. For instance, if you were trying to solve a maze, which is a, a classical uh, problem that we use to benchmark different systems in computer science, um, all of the scientific and technological knowledge in the world would tell you that the only way to solve this problem is to go through every possibility in the maze and uh, try to find the solution. 
But quantum computers fundamentally change that because they actually traverse every single path in the maze simultaneously and then almost instantly converge on one solution, the exit. So to give you a more concrete example, the way we discover pharmaceutical drugs right now is super inefficient. It takes some of the world's greatest minds, multiple decades, and hundreds of millions of dollars just to discover one drug. And the problem is, it's essentially like going down all these different paths where, where for every drug that we discover, 10,000 others are being developed, tested, and then fail. So we're going down all these paths in the maze, trying to find the exit with a sort of guess and check method, and we're wasting billions of dollars and decades of research in the process. But imagine, imagine if we could use quantum computing to explore every single possible pharmaceutical drug simultaneously. In a few minutes, we could discover a cure to heart disease. And so this is the crazy kind of thing that quantum computing can do for our future. And, you know, like, it's, it, it might seem kind of far-fetched right now, but there are now over a hundred companies in the world and thousands of universities working on developing practical applications for quantum computing. And a lot of those are actually having impacts on people's lives right now. Some of you may have even read about quantum computing in headlines, saying that it's too far into the future to matter. And I could talk to you about the technological details and why it's so revolutionary and not just another trend, but I could also just make a callback uh, to some of the technologies we've seen in the past. When Steve Jobs introduced the first iPhone, CEOs, critics, journalists, they all laughed at him to his face for this idea of, of a full screen touch screen and an all in one device that could do your emails and your phone calls and your messages. They thought it was ridiculous. And the CEOs and the companies that were laughing were the first to be disrupted. If you go back even further to the personal computer, there was a point when the president of IBM, Thomas Watson, actually said that he believed there was a global market for five computers in the world. And in 2019, computational devices outnumber humans three to one. That's 24 billion devices around the world. And so there's a very clear pattern of skepticism that accompanies these really transformative ideas. There's actually a quote from Larry Page that says that really good ideas are only crazy until they're not. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with quantum computing again. On top of that, as someone who's worked with some of the companies at the forefront of the industry, I'm telling you it's coming, and it's coming faster than people think. You know, like I've, I've, last year I was working with Rigetti on molecular simulations, which is actually the first step in discovering drugs almost instantaneously. And then just this past summer, I was working in the Creative Destruction Lab, which is a, a startup ex accelerator in Toronto. And I actually watched as 12 new companies were built in the span of two months, all of them focusing on developing applications for quantum computing, like drug discovery, like advanced rendering, like machine learning. And even just this past month, I was working up in IBM uh, in, New York, in New York at their quantum computing research headquarters, and it's just mind-boggling the amount of progress that we've made in a single year. And that's actually been a very consistent trend that we've seen over the past two decades. Like, quantum computing power has actually doubled over half a dozen times in 20 years. And so we're starting to see the, the magnitude of what it means to think exponentially. This is where we are right now. And what's about to happen is unimaginable. I think it's really important to remember that as a species, outlandish thinking is actually a necessity. It's actually a necessity to explore things that we haven't done before. Albert Einstein said that you can't just do things over and over again and expect a different result. That was actually his definition of insanity. And so we need to think differently.
So, like, personally, I'm just super excited that we all get to be a part of, like, working on these really difficult problems and, like, quite literally creating the future. Thank you.